Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Now, does your 22 RE sound like this? If that's the case, then there's a very good chance your idle air control valve is at fault. Now, if you notice here, my idle is first of all too high. It's also about 750. It's also bouncing. Now you can check the IAC valve uh, by basically covering this hole here. I used some Gorilla Tape uh, and then made sure it was long enough so it wouldn't get sucked into the throttle body. Uh, if you cover the hole and then let the car warm up and the idle is uh, is better, right? If the, if the When the car warms up, the idle is good with the hole covered, then your IAC valve is probably at fault. It's a pretty easy thing to replace. Um, so once you've determined that it is at fault, you're gonna go ahead and remove your throttle body I do have a full video on how to do that, which I will link below, but basically you remove your intake tube, you remove uh, some vacuum hoses, and the TPS uh, connector. It's also a good idea to check your idle set screw, seen here with the arrow. Um, you can adjust your idle with this. You gotta make sure to get your idle below about 900. If it's above 1,000 warm, then you might get the searching idle because of the fuel cut feature when the ECU senses that you're pressing the brakes and the idle is too high. Um, but if you set that correctly, if you've covered the hole and you're still getting issues, then it's time to replace the IAC valve. So go ahead and remove that throttle body off the truck and then we can get to the IAC valve. Now before, one final check we can do before we condemn the IAC valve is to check this coolant hose that goes from the block thermostat to the IAC valve. If you take this hose off, First, you want to look inside it, make sure that there's nothing uh, blocking coolant from getting to the IAC valve. If that checks out, then you can actually undo this little coolant neck or spigot next to the thermostat housing with a 12 millimeter deep socket, and you can look inside it. Many people have said that they found sort of gunked up silicon or, or other stuff inside this little, uh, this little spigot, and that can also cause issues. So check that out. If that checks out, then we're going to go ahead and replace the valve. Now, if we've decided that we need to replace the valve, then we're going to go ahead and remove it from the throttle body. It's held on by four JIS head screws. Uh, it's a good idea to get a set of screwdrivers, JIS head ones, if you're going to be working on Japanese cars. Uh, they fit better and prevent stripping out. You may also need an impact driver, such as this, which I'll show you how to use later. If you think you're going to mess up your screws, which you might, you can also get replacement screws. They're five millimeter. Uh, I got Allen head ones, um, which you can replace the screws with. The screws will be on there very tight. First, I tried with just the screwdriver and some hand force. That did not work out. So then I applied some penetrating fluid, let that sit for about 15, 20 minutes. Tried again, still no dice. So then I tried hitting the screwdriver with a hammer to sort of vibrate the screw loose. Sometimes that does the trick. Uh, sort of a Im mini impact driver. That didn't work, so then I went to the impact driver itself. Uh, this is essentially um, going to break the screw loose with both a twisting motion as well as a uh, hammering motion when you hammer it from the back with a hammer. Uh, this is one of the more satisfying tools to use when it works properly. And as you can see here, I had luck. I was able to get all four screws undone with my impact driver. Note here that there is one shorter screw. It goes in this one with a little cutout, as you can see here. The longer ones are 16 millimeters long and the shorter one is 12 millimeters. If you look inside the IAC valve, you can see that there is a spring. And essentially the way this works is as coolant passes through the IAC valve, uh, a wax pellet expands, right? Uh, once the coolant has heated up, it senses it no longer needs the extra air, so it closes the valve. If that wax pellet fails, and you can't really fix that, uh, then the IAC valve may be stuck open, thus always allowing the extra air. You can see how this is supposed to close here. 
um, which turned out to be the issue on my truck. So I replaced the IAC valve and that took care of my issue. Now I bought the intermotor part, AC141. Uh, on Amazon it says it's made in China, but the box here says it's made in Japan. And when I compared it to the other uh, part, the one that came off my truck, which is original to my knowledge, it seems identical. So um, this is actually a good bit cheaper than the genuine Toyota part, and it might honestly just be the exact same part made in the exact same factory. If you look at some of the details on both parts, they are very, very similar. This could be just a very, very good fake, but it feels quality, so I was happy with my purchase, and I saved a good chunk of money. Before we install our new valve, it's important that we make the mating surface for the gasket as spotless as possible. Uh, so I took a razor blade and some brake cleaner and just went around and cleaned the whole thing. Uh, now there was still a little bit of sort of uh, residue as you can see here, but it was perfectly flat. So I'd be able to get a good seal with the new gasket. Take your time, get it nice and clean. This will ensure you have no leaks. I then went ahead and replaced the gasket. Mine did come with a gasket, uh, my valve. Uh, and then I just screwed it back down with the GIS head screws. I figured that they were on there long enough and they worked great, so I wasn't gonna switch them out. But you might want to replace them with different screws. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and put the throttle body back on the truck, uh, reconnect all of your vacuum and coolant lines. Don't forget to reconnect your TPS sensor. Uh, and once you've done that, you are basically done. Now this did turn out to actually solve my problem. Um, my idle can now go down to the proper 750, 800. I can set my timing correctly and job done. Well, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you next time.